Black Orchid seemed like it was a lot of fun to perhaps shoot? No. Uh, no. No. You got you, to dance. Are you kidding? Okay. A, there's dancing, which is fine. That's fine. That costume, that rose costume, that was supposedly English summer. It was freezing. Absolutely freezing. And Sarah and I have got sod all costume, you know, on. Oh, my gosh. Oh, what I remember of that is being very, very cold indeed. You, you, you did seem to be, I guess, knowledgeable about the height requirement for stewardesses to get the job as Tegan. Why don't you um, enlighten us? I mean, you're well, not the first actor to do this. So, go yeah. ahead. Well, I'm, as you probably have noticed, not that tall. And in fact, I'm shorter than I used to be, you know. And um, I'm 70 next year. <laughs> anyway, so be impressed by all that running and power of the doctor. Oh, we're going to, we'll be, we'll be getting into that for sure. But Sophie Aldred and her big mouth. She wanted us to be action heroes. <laughs> Thanks, Soph. You know, she gets away with it because she's lovable, but you know, really. Um, and so John was looking for someone to play, be an air stewardess, and actually he knew what the minimum height requirement was. But what he liked was my chutzpah, because I said to, he said, how tall are you? And I said, five foot two, minimum height requirement for an air stewardess in Australia. Rubbish. <laughs> But of course, for the Far Eastern airlines like Singapore Airlines, they tend to be shorter because the women are smaller. Odd reinforcement, you know. He bought it. And he bought it. <laughs> and to be honest with you, it doesn't matter because depth of field in a, in, a, in a shot, you know, if you're standing in front of Peter, you look taller in relation to Peter than you actually are. This is true. And, you know, we're not saying Matthew or Sarah are actually giants, are we? Exactly towering over you in yeah. the shots or yeah. anything. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, so if someone's like, how did you land such a, an iconic role such as Tegan? You can always just add a lie through my teeth. Well, bend the truth a little. Okay. <laughs> And I'd stopped acting well, by the end of the 90s. Yeah, 91. Uh, end of the 80s, rather. And, uh, we are definitely going to talk about um, what you did, because basically that's when you took out, you got involved with women in film and television. Yeah, so I was involved in starting that in the UK, a UK chapter, and then I ran it for the first four years. Yeah. It's still going. It's hugely influential. It's done a lot of good for women in the business. And you give it up for that. That's, yeah, that is, that's, why, of course. Now, and then I got yeah. recruited by one of the members, Marina Martin, who was quite a well-known agent, and she was looking to retire, and would I take over the agency? Which you did. Which I did, and I was Paul's agent, Paul McGann's agent. Yeah. And, uh... That was pre doc Pre-doctor or after, when, before him playing the doctor or after? No, be, but it, one of the first calls I took was his interview for Doctor Who. That's incredible. And it was and it, I came, a coincidence, complete coincidence, or was there any? No, complete coincidence. That's incredible. And, and uh, you know, that the call came through to me. And um, I came over to Vancouver while he was filming. He mm -hmm. and Daphne were filming. And um, and then I came over to L.A. when it was screened in L.A. Um, so, yeah. This, this is weird. This is <laughs> truly, truly weird. So, 1983, and some of you have said, and I've seen photographs, were, were there in 1983 in Chicago. And... A couple of people decided to be very annoying and asked me to do the Mara laugh all the time. So, being me, I thought, well, I can ride with this or 
I can do something else. I said, the next person who does that is going to get hit over the head. <laughs> so naturally, somebody decided that, you know, to call my bluff. And there was a guy sitting down the front with one of those poster, cardboard poster things, poster roll. And the person stood up and, could you do the Mara laugh, please? I went, come down to the front. Do you mind if I borrow your cardboard to roll there? Thank you. And I hit him over the head. I then had people lining up to be hit over the head. <laughs> Everywhere I went when I went, when I did a convention, and I did a lot of conventions for the BBC because when Patrick died, I picked up quite a few of his gigs. People would have made, when I turned up, they'd have made a Mara stick for me. <laughs> and I would hit them over the head. And they would line up to be hit over the head. And I remember staying at one point, something's going seriously wrong in America. <laughs> this is the most powerful nation on earth. And here you are lining up to be hit over the head. You were reluctant to get involved with Big Finish and then... Yeah, well, I wasn't. Uh, a, when I was an agent, I didn't think it was appropriate. And, 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 and B, I just didn't think I'd be any good at it because I'd stopped acting. And Gary Russell, he can nag. He can seriously <laughs> nag. How am I going to shut him up? Okay. I'll do one. It was his last story, and I said, I'll do one, but only one. What does he do? He kills me off. Well, all but kills me off at the end of the story. And um, I loved doing it. I had a great time. I give, gave Peter grief. Always fun. And, um, and, you know, working with Sarah and what have you. And, and, and so, would you do any more? Yeah, Okay. And, uh, and then it and blossomed the, on, though, didn't and it? And the lunches were fantastic. <laughs> Early on, long before Behind the Sofa, we were doing the DVD commentaries, and Peter sure. and I s decided early on that it was r most of them are really boring because people go, oh, darling, you were so wonderful. You know, oh, isn't that fabulous? And you think, this is really boring. So let's make it a bit more interesting and a bit more honest. And uh, so we started that with the DVDs, and it's carried over into Behind the Sofa. because, And it, it was just that we wanted it to be entertaining, you know? It, and it used to be horrible if we got the director in, because you had to be polite. Right? Like, Cut, you know, Peter and I would go there, there if the director wasn't there. Why didn't they cut at that point? That's ridiculous. Why did they do that shot? You get to go, you get to unleash all those. Uh, you get to unleash So it's cathartic bit. at the oh, same time. Yeah, 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 yeah. So quite late in July, I get an email from Julian Owen, Owen who sometimes represents me for conventions, mm -hmm. you know, and. Um, he said that, you know, Andy Pryor, who was the casting director, was interested in knowing whether I'd, whether I'd be interested in doing Doctor Who. And I said, yeah. <laughs> um, you know, doing uh, a, 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 one of the specials. And I said, mm hmm And then I didn't really hear anything for quite a few weeks. And I thought, oh, it's obviously gone away. And they've decided to do something different. Um, and the next thing, it's sort of, it's all systems go. And I'm having chat with Chris Chibnall about how I thought my character's life would have gone after the TARDIS. And I said, well, you know, the thing about the Doctor is you know, you're facing life and death issues all the time and really important moral questions and that 
has to change you profoundly, and so the course of Tegan's life would automatically change quite radically. And so we get that speech that I deliver about the course my life has taken, and it's obvious that Sophie and I have been involved in probably in, in ecological uh, activism. Yeah, uh, and she has a wanderlust about her too. Now that first scene of you two on the phone together, yeah, that was a brilliant, uh, nice. But it, oh Sally wasn't God. performed that, together that, though. There's someone else who's got to be reading the lines off camera when you were doing that scene, of course. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So you've got an AD, an assistant director, I hate reading them. it. I hate them so much. Absolutely flat, toneless voice. I've got a mobile in front of me, and I can see myself in the mobile. I had to get them to tape it so that I couldn't see myself because it was so off-putting. Because I thought, who is this old woman? Oh, my God. So once they, once they did that, uh, you know, I could remember the lines instead of being distressed by how I looked. Uh, I never said I wasn't vain. That never happened. I am vain. Yeah, so, uh, you know, I did it not as aggressive as that, and they went more. And I did it again, and it less, you know, a little bit more, more. And, uh, and then they just, I think it took about three, they really wanted her to go in really hard and make it really embarrassing and awkward. And I think I succeeded. Because <laughs> Ray the Holman, who, who is the costume designer, who's going to Galley actually in February, is just A, lovely, and B, so clever. And, um, and he sent me uh, a picture of this jacket, amongst other things. And it didn't appeal to me at all, and I thought, Neh. Anyway, got down to Cardiff and I tried it on. It was just like instantly. Instant, yeah. yeah. Instantly. Thank God, John, you know, was, was, was on it because, you know, we discussed it. It was obvious it was going to be one take, probably. And we needed to get it right. And he was concerned, as I was, about where I was on the other side of the wall because... You know, they've got, they've got those fiberglass hands, you know. He could really have done some damage to me. You know, I break easily. I'm a delicate flower, um, obviously. Um, and so he put a little wire, they put a little wire through to show where he would be coming through. And, you know, so we just choreographed it really carefully. When we did the holograph scene, it, he wasn't there that day. It, it, was a, it was a very sad day for me because um, one of my godson had phoned me at three in the morning and, and his father had just died and his father was an old friend. And so, it, 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 you know, it, it, was a very, it was a bit of a blur that day. And, um, and I'd forgotten that we hadn't been in the same space that... Once again, I'd had an AD reading in, and I came back in November to read with Peter while he did the scene. So, so we did do it, which is why I'd forgotten that I hadn't done that scene with him. But I, it wasn't when our, my part of it was, it was coverage, yeah. It, well, it wasn't even coverage because they weren't interested in me. I wasn't made up or anything. And, and the lovely thing, by the way, about Peter coming to, um, to do the to do the, uh, when I came to read through with Peter, Jody had already finished on set, and Jody had this amazing Winnebago. You know, it had a dining room, it had a living room, it had a bedroom, it had a shower, you know, so it was really posh. And um, so the crew, when they were allocating, and it, you know, and it was Peter and some of the other doctors, and, and so they, they gave me the posh Winnebago, and Peter was in the three-way. 
So well done. I got I got to rub it in because they knew that Peter and I wound each other up. You know that they were like doing that. I'm I may have gloated a little, uh, a bit, a, just a little. It's called moasting when you're moaning and boasting at the same time. Yeah. When you moasting. Anyway, I got back from I got I got I got back to the Winnebago and there was a big eviction notice Peter had put up on the. Brilliant. <laughs> Five doctors. A little special word. Yeah, 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 yeah. A long time ago now, um, and that was um, yeah because on the way back from filming, my husband was up in Glasgow because he was editing. He was seconded to edit one of the Scottish daily papers, and so he was away, and uh, uh, we were moving house. <laughs> And all of this was happening, and I ended up staying o- overnight with Carol Ann Ford and her husband because I, c- I had no home. <laughs> um, I remember that and how lovely it was to work with Lizzie and Patrick. I'm a big Patrick fan. Patrick was the doctor for me that I remembered best from growing up, so that was just amazing, and I loved it. And um, and it was lovely getting to know Lizzie, and um, you know, it was just great. And Padders, Wendy Padders, uh, she was briefly in the bubble wrap, right? She was. Yeah. We were all popping, popping her as she yeah. went. This is Mick Wingert, and you're watching Fandom Spotlight. Be sure to like and subscribe, and don't forget to have fun and follow your fandom.